Today we're going to talk about a few news stories. Uh, one of them deals with the fact that Nintendo is now slowly starting to get crushed in sales in Japan. They aren't able to top PlayStation 5 seemingly anymore. Maybe this will change when Tears of the Kingdom launches or some other Nintendo IP that could potentially give a boost to sales. But it is pretty obvious that even in the territory where Switch has seemingly always been number one, that the PlayStation 5 is hitting its stride and the Switch is obviously showing its age in terms of it's hit market saturation, right? It's hit that point where Nintendo even has self-admitted that they are trying to get people to buy a second Switch. That means you've hit market saturation if one of your goals is to get people to pick up an extra system. Before we deep dive into the news, I want to make an announcement. We're on a road to 100,000 subscribers. I don't think that's a secret that that is a goal here in 2023. And if we hit 100,000 subscribers, we're going to be giving away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom. That's right. That hard to get, impossible to get. The thing I've been complaining that's hard for me to even get my hands on. That's right. We're going to be giving away a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom to celebrate 100,000 subscribers. I also feel like if we could somehow pull off 100,000 subscribers by the time Tears of the Kingdom out, comes out, it's sort of a dual celebration of the release of what is likely to become my new favorite game of all time and obviously celebrating a milestone at the channel. So, hey, why not hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and let's get into that news. Now, what's interesting, of course, is some of the positive news I want to get to first. We do have a bit of a rumor. There's going to be a Pokemon event likely happening on the 27th. They've done one like every year for a while now on the 27th, the Pokemon Day event. They're going to be announcing a bunch of Pokemon stuff, and there is supposedly a rumor floating out there that the Pokemon Together website is teasing a potential new Mystery Dungeon game uh, because there is a Spike Chunsoft reference spotted. So it is in the code of the website. It's a copyright text. Spike Chunsoft, they're the company that makes the Mystery Dungeon stuff. So this is why people think it could mean something. Now, this was posted by Necroleap over on Twitter. So take this for what it is. This text does exist. I did look for it and confirm it, but... Again, does it mean anything? We don't really know, but it is something that is floating out there. So next up, we should be talking about Splatoon 3 because today they announced their new season that begins on March 1st. They're calling this the Fresh Season. Uh, so it says breaking news, SLR here, with advanced info about next season in the Splatoon 3 game. We'll be entering the Fresh Season 2023 on March, and SRL's hardworking scientists have you covered with a plethora of discoveries. Grab eight pencils if you have tentacles and start taking notes. Behold, the Kraken Royale. That's right, the Kraken ability is coming back. Activate this special to transform into a giant squid or octopus with the power to splat and scatter enemies left and right. You could jump to trigger a wide ranging spin move or hold and release the ZR button to unleash a one shot charge attack exactly like it worked back in the day. Then they show the Kraken Royale in action. I'll give you a little clip of that here. So it's pretty cool. Next up, they have the Crack on Splat Roller, a special collab with the Crack on brand. It I love that, the crack on bread. Anyways, it comes with a squid beacon sub-weapon to help you and your team zip to the heart of the action, as well as the Kraken Royale special to let them have it once you're there. Last one for today, this is going to be the .96 Gal Deco, a spiffy redesign of the classic .96 Gal. This powerful weapon lets you target enemies from afar, possibly while hiding behind your splash wall sub. Then when the time is right, burst forth using a Kraken Royale and wreck and reek. Sorry, reek havoc. Now look, there's going to be some uh, other maps and stuff coming back as well. Some people are really excited about that. They previously announced that stuff, so we won't cover it here. But hey, the new season's coming. That's pretty excited. I honestly, maybe after I'm done with Metroid Prime Remaster, maybe I start playing some uh, Splatoon 3 again. I never really got deep into Splatoon 3 to begin with the way I did with Splatoon 2. And I feel like I'm missing out. I really need to get some splat action going on. And now we get to our final story. And this is about those sales data that we were talking about. That data that shows that, you know what, Nintendo is uh, not doing well in Japan. So let's talk about that. 
Uh, the sales for last week shows that Hogwarts Legacy is the number one game uh, that was just released. Now, Nintendo Switch games are pretty much still dominating the top 10. We have Gran Turismo 7 for PlayStation 5 coming in at number 9. But, uh, yeah, number two is Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Number three is Splatoon. Number four is Mario Kart 8. Number five is Minecraft. Number six is Fire Emblem Engage. Seven is Nintendo Switch Sports. Eight is Mario Party Superstars. And then ten, we have Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So it's not as if people aren't buying Switch games at a fervor, but it's the hardware sales that have gone down. The PlayStation 5, just the base model of PlayStation 5, that's the one with the disc version. That is 81,798 units. It has now crossed 2.4 million of just that version of PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 5 digital version comes in at number four with an additional 11,776. So you can see in Japan, there is a massive preference for physical media. Uh, next up, the Switch OLED models at number two with 32,000. So there's about 3.8 million, almost 3.9 million of that model sold. Then we have the base model Switch at number three at 12,000. 513 that's the one that has 19 million and then switch light coming in at number five with 10,000 there's about 5.2 million switch lights so the xbox series s is the best selling xbox last week as well about 247,000 of those have been sold altogether still have the new 2ds coming in uh at number nine they it's actually out of production and it only sold 91 units but hey technically they, they report on the top 10 and well there's nine there isn't a top 10 so everything gets reported so what's interesting, of course, is that PlayStation 5 is obviously crushing Switch this week. The combined sales of Switch is right around 55, 56,000 units, which isn't bad. But then PlayStation is sitting there up at 92, 93, almost doubling, not quite doubling. Of course, about 10,000 units short of doubling up the Switch. And PlayStation 5 has been just kind of just sitting there at number one now for almost a month straight. This does say a couple of things that one PlayStation 5 could have been massively supply constrained, which kept Switch at the top most of last year. And now that PlayStation 5 is in much more plentiful supply, we're seeing what the actual demand for it is in Japan. Also, the Switch is entering its seventh year. Like literally once we hit March 3rd, that's the sixth anniversary. From there on forward, it's the seventh year. I've been saying for a while that Switch has probably hit market saturation. We sort of overreacted maybe a bit early when PlayStation 5 beat out Switch one time last October. But now we're sort of seeing this consistent pattern. I'm not saying that Switch won't ever take back the number one spot. This is probably going to happen when Tears of the Kingdom comes out. Maybe it'll happen with Kirby. Maybe it'll happen with a Pokemon game or something. But I think we are seeing, and Nintendo is self-admitting, that we are pretty much at the end of Switch. Whether we like to admit it or not, Nintendo's Shintaro Furukawa in their most recent financial briefing was asked about a lot of different things, new hardware, he sort of skirted around that. But what's interesting is he noted that they're trying to sell second and third systems to people, which, I mean, you've hit market saturation if that's what you're trying to, trying to do. He also admitted that it would be really hard to convey the appeal of Switch entering its seventh year because this is uncharted territory and while the fervor of sales for the software hasn't seemingly slowed down obviously he doesn't think that they're going to be able to sell the same amount of switches next fiscal year as the current in fact he's straight up said we don't foresee the ability to sell as many switches as we did this fiscal year next fiscal year so while they didn't give us any projections yet he's well aware the switch is on the way out like it, it, that's just the way it is they're trying to rely on, on, on selling special editions and, and, and second and third systems to people. So I do think that this is the first admittance from Nintendo at that investors meeting, and we're seeing it now in their territory where they almost always win, that it's probably time for Nintendo to start thinking about what the hell they're doing next. And, of course, they've already been thinking about it. I, I don't think we're getting new hardware this year, so I, do, I don't think this is one of those oh, Nintendo is admitting they got to launch new hardware this year. But I do think this is probably 2023 going to March of 2024 is probably the swan song for Switch. It'll be the last fiscal year, that year seven, where Switch is the only platform Nintendo is selling. Now, in year eight of Switch, I, they'll still be selling the Switch, I think, for a little bit. But there'll be a new platform probably launching by holiday of 2024, if I had to guess. Obviously, we have reports that agree with that as well from Nick Kay. But again, we've had reports on new hardware for how many years? So I'm just kind of looking at this more from a logical perspective than a report perspective. So 
take that for what you will. Uh, I know our dear friends, Kit and Krista, put out a recent podcast episode talking about how, you know, why are people so quick to rush switch out the door? I don't know that people are quick to rush it out. I just think we've hit market saturation. And we're at that point where, yeah, we're still playing the games. We still love the games. We're still buying the games. But uh, a lot of us are kind of ready for that next system, right? Like, we just we just are. We're hitting the point where PlayStation 5 Slim is probably coming out this year. That's like a middle-of-generation move by Sony to bust out a PlayStation 5 Slim. I think people forget we're entering the third year of the PlayStation 5's availability. Like, let that sink in for a moment. Generations last about six years for Sony. So if we're entering year three, then, like, we're... Nintendo's got to have something coming, right? So, anyways, you guys let me know what you think about all this stuff down in the comments below. What was your favorite story today? Was it the Splatoon? Was it the whatever? Hey, this is our first video in a while. We didn't have Zelda news, so there's that. Um, it feels kind of nice getting some uh, additional news out to you guys. Well, we'll hopefully catch you tonight. We'll have another live stream happening around 8 p.m. Central Time. You guys are awesome, amazing, and epic, and I love each and every one of you, and I'll catch you in the next video.